Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Edge 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to IBM Edge, everybody. Stu Miniman and I are going to wrap up. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. All right, Stu, this is the wrap on, on day one. Uh, you know, classic IBM event where you get the main tent in the morning, got a, got a really you know, polished IBM exec in Tom Rosamilia hosting the event. It started exactly at 8.30, right? IBM's never late on these things. We go to a lot of these big data shows, they start 15 minutes late. Hey, how you doing? IBM, like clockwork. Um, really, you know, strong presentations in the, in the main tent. We've had a number of guests on today, you know, like Jason at MIT Technology Review and others. But here's what it comes down to. This franchise of IBM, the, you know, the, the roots of IBM are in this group and it's completely transformed. You really got three lines. You got the mainframe, you got power, and you got storage. And the mainframe is all about you know, leveraging the install base and opening it up so that you can bring in, you know, maintain applications, maybe bring in some new apps, uh, but really you know, managing those highest end transaction systems, maybe bringing in some analytics as well and blending those together. Power, it's all about analytics. We heard that from Stephanie. Analytics, analytics, analytics. Moore's Law running out of gas. We're going to open up and create this ecosystem. Totally viable strategy. When, when people first heard about open power, they said, oh, there's IBM's Hail Mary. But IBM thought it through, very you know, successful initiative that continues to grow. And then storage is a, is a business that's being transformed. New, uh, new manager in Ed Walsh. It's all about software defined. It's all about flash. It's all about getting R&D into the product pipeline. And for all three of those businesses, it's about going through the services channel, whether that services channel is cloud or the IBM Global Services Group. So it seems like you know, steady as she goes. Yeah, Dave, I mean, really impressive day. I mean, IBM does a really good job of with just the breadth and the depth of people at this conference. Uh, when we talk to the IBM people, what they're really proud of is that it's mostly the customers telling the story, talking about the business impact, talking about what they're doing, um, and you know, wow, just some guests really that blew us away. You, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, Jason from the MIT Technology Review. I mean, great publication. Uh, you know, started in 1899. I mean, look at where technology has <laughs> come since 1899. To you know, our, our last guest. Here, uh, you know, we had Mike from Techscape, Techscape just talking about just you know in the last decade or two some amazing things that you know have changed what we're doing. Uh, Stephanie, Stephanie on talking about everything from you know down in the little endian stuff to the power of open source and Linux uh, transforming. So you know, great customers, execs, uh, and you know. Really not talk, you know, we, we talked about some of the bits and bytes and of course some, some of the products that IBM has, uh, but Dave, it's about, you know, really some of the transformational things. I always think back to the, you know, Jeff Hammabacher uh, line that, you know, it's, it, it's a shame that the sharpest minds uh, of our generation are working on, you know, how to get better click rates on ads. Uh, that's not what we're he talking about here uh, at the IBM show. It, it's really how, you know, cognitive computing, uh, you know, how IOT, how all of these, you know, massive trends, cloud uh, and infrastructure are going to you know, impact business uh, and make it, Dave, what's it? It's a smarter planet is, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the, IB, the old IBM tagline. Well, that was a great campaign. But you know, you're right, Jason Ponton's TED Talk yeah. was all about solving big technology problems or big, big problems with, with, with technology. And, and so, you know, it's interesting, Stu. I mean, this division, I think the, the biggest, one of the biggest challenges this division has is the way in which IBM accounts for stuff. <laughs> IBM wants to show growth in analytics, growth in cloud, you know, all the, the new thing, cognitive, that's where IBM wants to show its revenue to the street. They don't want to show, I mean, they're not like motivated to show revenue in mainframe and storage and power. They want to show momentum there, great. Uh, but those businesses, the fact is they throw off a lot of cash, they throw off a lot of profit, they're important, they're strategic. Ed Walsh you know, definitively said, no, they didn't bring me in here to sell the division. You know, I'm here to transform it. That's a you know, big part of what he does. So, so that's interesting, like I say, that's, oftentimes it's those internal challenges. Uh, we heard from Jamie Thomas today talking about some of the R&D activity that's going on in IBM. It's always been a mainspring of, of IBM um, R&D, is this group, uh, because you know, a lot of the work that they're doing in you know, core chips is fundamental to innovation. We heard about Moore's Law, peaking out, Pat, Pat Gelsinger maybe disagrees, 
but I think it's kind of a fact that the physics of Moore law, Moore's law are you know, reaching the end. David Floor has written about that. Um, so IBM's challenge is, okay, how do we maintain relevance and growth you know, with this business, and how do we support the, the growth areas of IBM, uh, and at the same time, grow our business and be able to fund you know, the R&D required, and you know, kind of good, good leadership to do that. We'll have Doug Baylog on tomorrow, Tom Rosamilia, who runs you know, the entire division, uh, formerly you know, big mainframe guy, so he's got a perspective there. Ed Walsh obviously on today. So we've heard from each of the, or will have heard from each of the division heads. Um, some of the gaps, you know, kind of dancing around hyperconverged, you know, clearly something that they're going to partner with that looks like Cisco, although Cisco we think has its own designs on hyperconverged. So that's sort of a question mark. Maybe IBM's thinking about leapfrogging that. They're not going to show too much leg about you know, what's next down the road, but what's your take on the whole HCI play? Yeah, I mean, very much a focus at IBM on the software component, so, you know, you're right, they danced around hyperconverged because they have a converged solution today in partnership uh, with, with Cisco. Uh, and while today convergent infrastructure is much larger than hyperconverge, hyperconverge has a great growth rate. Um, it'll take a few years for it to, to, to catch up, uh, but where IBM has to play, you know, we, we say uh, our server SAN, there's the enterprise uh, server SAN, and then there's the hyperscale uh, environments. And IBM, of course, you know, looks to play in both of those environments. Uh, so they've got soft layer, they've got architectures there, they're pushing their software, uh, they're working with partner technology to make sure that they've got you know, a good uh, basis with soft layer and, uh, and, and, and Bluemix. Um, but you know, today, you know, if you say, okay, I, I want to buy VMware vSAN, I'm looking at that, I'm looking at Nutanix, uh, which by the way, since we did our intro this morning, it looks like the, the IPO for Nutanix is finally happening, uh, valued somewhere, what, one and a half to two billion dollars. Uh, so that means hyperconvert with kind of the value of the IPO. Um, really, that's, that, that's, the, that's the, the, what, they're, what they're saying the current value is. Yeah. So not dramatically higher than well, of course, they went out and originally in December, the market tanked. Yeah, they're, so they're not doing, looking to do a big raise with the IPO. So they, they've got cash in the bank uh, and they, they've got their growth rate, but yeah, they're, they're, they're not trying to go too big with the IPO. Well, it's interesting. So one of the things about IBM, and we've said this before, it's, it's, it's classic you know, crossing the chasm, right? The, the, the new stuff isn't big enough, even though it's growing super fast to offset the decline in the old stuff. We've seen virtually every large technology company face this challenge. The difference with IBM is, you know, unlike HP, which we said had to shrink to grow, they split in two, they just sold off the software business, now maybe they're in a position to grow. IBM has yet granted it's sold off some businesses, and it hasn't grown the top line, but it's been able to continue to hit its earnings, throw off enough cash to do some mega stock buybacks. I mean, some people have criticized that, but you know, it's like Warren Buffett says, stock buybacks are a good deal when the stock is undervalued. Um, and so, a lot of people think that IBM as a company has been undervalued for a while now, and probably is, if you believe that IBM and Ginny Rometty and her team's strategy is the right one, that it was undervalued. Big acquisition of SoftLayer several years ago after the whole CIA, Amazon, you know, kerfuffle. Um, that was a wake up call for IBM, big investment there. Um, restructuring, the analytics business, um, taking the, the services business, which is really IBM was and continues to be largely a services-led business, but, but bringing that into the different businesses, splitting up you know, that software group, as it were, bringing analytics, uh, 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 cloud, uh, and, and cognitive as different divisions, aligning with the different industries. So in other words, taking the industries which were within global services, and aligning some of the software there. So completely new strategies and streamlining the, the systems and technology, what was then the systems and technology business. Uh, uh, getting rid of the microelectronics business, we heard Jamie talk about that. They, they essentially paid to have that happen, but it cleaned up the operations. Uh, getting rid of the x86 business, jettisoning that to streamline that business. So my point is if you believe in that strategy that has taken five years really now to finally see to fruition, you're starting to see that come into focus. And if that starts taking off, which it looks like it very well may do, then IBM is an undervalued company. A lot of people have written about that and uh, could get back to the mojo that uh, we've seen over the years from IBM. It takes IBM a while, it goes through these cycles. You know, you saw, you saw Gerstner go through it, now, now Ginny's going through it. Uh, certainly Palmasano continued the legacy of Gerstner. 
he got out at the time when you sort of could see, uh-oh, something big has to change. Ginny put that in motion. It's funny, I was, um, you know, you don't get it so much anymore, but the number one question about IBM that you used to get was, how long does Ginny have? Now that was a lot of competitive FUD, a lot of the journalists like to talk about that. And my answer was always, I, th I think long enough to prove that she was right. Uh, because I think that the strategy was right on. Let's invest in the future, cognitive, AI, cloud, make some bets, buy some companies, and go. And I think that, yeah, the future is pretty bright here, Stu. Yeah, I IBM's a real big company, Dave, so it does take you know, time for it to move. There's so many different moving pieces uh, inside there, but uh, you know, it's impressive. When you know, we you talk about the history lesson, Dave, and you talk about all the companies that have been felled over time, um, and IBM seems to be the exception uh, that kind of proves the rule almost as to you know, every time there's been a major change, you know, IBM's still there. Um, it, it's funny, I, when I talk to peers of mine out there, they're like, oh, I'm going to the you know, IBM Edge, which is you know, power, you know, main mainframe and Linux uh, and, uh, and, and storage, and many are like, wait, mainframe's still around? It's like, you know, there's still people that didn't realize that you could run Linux on mainframe, which I knew 15 years ago. So, you know, we talked today, uh, you know, containers came up a bunch, um, you know, all the kind of latest things that we're talking about um, can live in, you know, power and mainframe, they all can live in IBM's cloud, so uh, it all kind of comes together, uh, and IBM just kind of has this, this big broad portfolio uh, that they can pull it all together. Well, there's so much custom code built up in mainframes, it's just it's too expensive to, to convert it, it's too risky to the business. So, but I, so IBM and Oracle are so similar and so different, yeah. right? I mean, they're similar in the sense that they go after value. They don't chase volume, they chase profits, but they're, they're so different in the way in which they approach ecosystems and, and markets. I mean, essentially Ellison's trying to become the iPhone for the enterprise. IBM is trying to leverage, you know, open, it's, and it's open system plays and other plays that it's made in the past, you know, to compete, to lever, you know, this franchise that is, that is IBM. And we've talked about a, a lot today, we haven't talked much about Amazon, talked a lot about, you know, Dell, EMC, because it's sort of a quasi storage show here. Uh, you're seeing a whole new sort of wave of storage innovation, startups are still there. Uh, you know, IBM wants to, wants to be a player there. So we'll see, we'll see if Ed Walsh can actually bring back you know, IBM to the to the top spot. They mentioned a number two in storage. Number everybody two. slices and everybody's number one or number two in storage. It's sort of interesting how they <laughs> slice and dice the I, IDC numbers. But the bottom line is, can they grow again? And that really is what you know the street wants to see. I'm sure that's what Ginny wants to see. I'm sure that's what Ed Walsh wants to see and Tom Rosamilia. So, um, but big business still highly relevant and supportive of the cognitive and analytics initiatives that IBM has. Yeah, uh, anything from the IBM Go website that you've been seeing, Dave? I love kind of the tweet velocity, it's got some of the influencers, uh, you know, lots of things moving there. So ibmgo.com is this sort of collection and compendium of all the content associated with the top five or six IBM events. And so what we do is, you, you know, the Cube model, we pump in Cube videos, Cube gems, main tent content, breakout session content, all floated into IBM Go. And the way it works is you got to sign in to see the main tent uh, uh, videos, you don't have to sign in to see the queue videos, of course, but all kinds of silicon angle uh, commentary will flow in there, third party articles. Uh, so check out ibmgo.com, obviously, check out siliconangle.com, wikibon.com for all the research, and uh, crowdchat.net slash IBM Edge. This is a wrap, Stu, day one. IBM Edge will be here tomorrow. We start off at uh, 10 30. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock tomorrow, 10 o'clock local time. We're in Pacific time. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.